Coronavirus lockdown, day nine. Are Americans ready to give up their rights due to all this propaganda? What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard to Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday, March. What the hell day is it? I've been locked down so long. It is March the 29th as we get ready to end the quarter. And, and here we are, obviously, with a horrific disease, a pandemic, which obviously I misjudged when it was first began. It has obviously spread like wildfire. And so is the propaganda and <clears throat> the rest of the garbage that is out there. Are Americans going to give up their rights once again, like they did uh, during 9-11, and run to sign something that is not that good? Again, this is always an issue. You know, when fear strikes, people are willing to do anything to try to get rid of it. And, and of course, when you, you see some of these bills, like the bill that was just signed, I'm glad that they were able to help out many. But at the end of the day, what was the bill going to be, and what did we give up to get there? And this is... This is the issue, you know, when we're dealing with these politicians that could give a rat's ass about anything, okay? I, in my opinion, there, there's one guy that really cares, and most of you don't like him, but hey, that's the brakes, Donald Trump. He is trying to work it out and make it better for everybody. But of course, you've got the Pelosi who wants to give the world away. What does she care? She's 80, a millionaire, and getting ready to drop. I mean, it's it's ridiculous is it, what's going on here. And of course, yeah, nobody wants to talk about the <clears throat> the Joe Biden uh, the sexual assault allegations or the cases that just kind of get swept under the rug. You know, it's 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 an amazing situation we have here. But this is what we have, and so it's our time to to make a decision: is is are we going to keep buying into the same old same old crap and continue to build this massive mound of debt? that can only lead to destruction, as you are seeing in the markets around the world, okay? I, again, you, you, you look at what's going on here, and, and of course, we will be the first to take our eyes off the ball and say, hey, we, we'll do anything. Get, get us out. Get me out of my house. Do something, okay? But again, at what price are you giving up the, your long-term for the short-term potential gain here? OK, this is always an issue and has been for for years and years and years and years. You know, we're, we're too worried about missing some social event. The number one thing to worry about now is to getting the, the halting of this coronavirus to get it slowed down and get it under control so that we can get back to a normal life or as normal as we can get for the next month, two months, six months, year. Nobody knows. Okay, We don't know the answer to that. But certainly, it's better taking the time now and waiting, okay, and getting it done right versus getting a lot of false starts and have to go back into the same position we are in now. This is going to be major destruction on, on many, many people, on many, many companies, restaurants, their employees, okay, you know, bartenders, bars. Those guys, are they're going to be in big trouble. Okay, even with some bailout money, how much do you think they can continue to bail them out? And of course, other companies, other than you know the Amazons and the WalMarts and the you know, Walgreens, CVS drugstores, nobody else is open. Gas stations. Okay. So where's you know that's the problem. Okay, so there's no growth. There's nothing going on. And other than you know essentials, nobody's buying anything. So here we have. A major problem, yet we, we had a market that had major up moves at the end of last week, which is, hey, fine, look, we'll, we'll talk about markets later. But, but again, no surprise, okay? Again, nothing should ever surprise you about what the markets do, okay? Nothing should ever surprise you. What should surprise you <clears throat> is the idiocy that goes on in Washington. <clears throat> the jockeying for position, especially by Pelosi, okay? Again, this is your leader if you're if you're on that side and 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 Jesus Louise okay again I, I'm probably believe me I'm I've I've voted on both sides of the aisle in my life and man, how ever she ever got in is a, is amazing okay because she raises a lot of money so again my, money forgives a lot of evils okay but again you, you look at 
you know, all these things that are going on. And I, I, and I think that you just have to, uh, you have to fight the bullet and get it done so that we can move forward. Okay. Because again, there's, there's so much destruction already from, for many, okay, that will never recover. Okay. And that, that's the, that's the sad part of this story. Okay. There's so much destruction did to so many that they will never, I mean, some of these smaller businesses, they'll never recover from what's happening here. Okay. Their employees will never recover. So again, we need to get it done. We need to work on it quickly. And that means keeping it the way it is and keeping things under control. Okay. You know, I, again, sometimes you have to sacrifice to make it for the good of the country. Okay. Not for the good of your party. Okay. Which, which of course is what we've seen here. Okay. We need, this is a country now. This should not be a political issue. This should be a national nationwide, everybody together issue. But of course, obviously, you know, with, uh, since uh, Hillary Clinton ran into all the, the divisiveness on the left, it has become just the left, everything that the right does is wrong. And, and again, we'll move on because that's, an, that's enough of that <clears throat> nonsense. Okay. Now, it's my understanding that Russia is going to close their borders tomorrow. Okay. And which, which should be done, <clears throat> you know, again, you want to do things you, you have to, there, there's certain things that when you do, when you have the unknown, you've got to take care of business the best way you know, and that is to quit transmitting it around. Okay. And of course the international flights have been banned, which is, which is, which is what should happen as well. Okay. Now, you know, as, as you look, okay, is this, you know, are we, are we in the start <clears throat> of the next great depression or is this, you know, as you know, if for those, listeners of my Bubba's bottom line for the last year or two, I said about six months ago, seven months ago, that we are in the very early stages of a recession. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, this is not a surprise. Obviously, the virus is a tragedy, but the economy is not a surprise. It was slowing down before this happened. All this is doing is accelerating it. Okay. But are we going into a depression? I would think not. I mean, again, I don't think that we're in a position for a depression, I think you're in a position for an extended recession. Okay. I think that it's going to be tough and there's going to be things out there and there's going to be problems and there's going to be some failure. But at the end of the day, okay, that is the problem with the Keynesian theory of economics. That is the problem with the Federal Reserve and their idiocy. Because again, you cannot continue to just print money and print money. But of course, that is the, the long term goal of these central banks is to wipe out the middle class anyways and have the money end up in the few, okay? And not the few proud in the Marines, in the few, okay? That, that's what you look at it. If you, if you, like I said, I, I, I encourage you to read The Creature from Jekyll Island. Obviously, there's things in there that are obviously a little bit over the top, but a lot of things that he wrote about are happening today, okay? And, and again, you continue every time the Fed makes an adjustment, which they've made six in the last two weeks. They're re reducing the value of your money. They are making you work harder to make the same amount and live the same lifestyle. Okay. You can bet your ass on it. That's what they're doing. Okay. And of course, now we have the very real threat here of stagflation. Okay. Which is out of all of them is the worst. Okay. Uh, losing jobs. Losing wages, higher unemployment, higher inflation. How's that going to work out? Okay. But again, when you continue to destruct your, your country and your currency by, by adding on massive amounts of debt, okay, through your short sighted Keynesian view of economics. And again, I'm not saying that Austrian is better, okay, than Keynesian. There's probably a good blend. All right. You know, but again, to continue to, to try to avoid rough economic situations is ridiculous because they happen. And the best way to let them go is to let the weak fall out of the system and let the strong rebuild in again. Okay. But again, we can't do that. We have to continue to try to, to get around in the meantime, letting the very few companies benefit like crazy through this. And usually obviously the very big ones. So in my view, okay, they've got to, they've got, they, they should be doing a better job. It, it, what's going on. But again, that's not going to change. I, look, the Fed's here. 
Okay, they shouldn't be, but the Fed's here, central banking is here. It was a con job in 1913 that was sold to the American people, and it's still a con job today. Okay, it's the largest legalized Ponzi scheme in the world, the central banking system. Okay, again, for creating money, creating money, creating money to make you work harder, even though you make five times what you made in 1985, you're working twice as hard to support your family, unlike 1985. So, hey. I, again, you know, are we going to have a great dollar shortage here? You know, well, the dollar's been weak recently, right? I mean, because the Fed has been trying to make the dollar weak as they continue to pound on the dollar and, and bring rates down. Okay. But again, the dollar somehow finds a way to hold and, and come back. Anyways, I mean, if you remember the dollar was on to 88 cents, it's still 98 cents Okay, after just being at a dollar three. So the, the Fed can do all of this all at once. All right. And in, in the meantime, Okay, you know, the bond market is continues to soar. All right. But again, the bond market, remember, is the one market that is, is that can take on the Fed head on. It's the biggest market in the world, all combined. Okay. But I, I think the biggest one of the biggest warning signs that I see is the uh, the the willingness now for banks to start to ease restrictions. Now you know, I'm on record and I'm not I'm not ashamed that the banks are over leveraged again. That's my opinion. I have no proof, but that's my opinion. I don't care what they tell me about stress tests. I don't care what they tell me about their usual BS because they always tell me that everything's okay. And of course, then we find out later, oh, it wasn't. Right. But I think with the be, between what they've done before this all started, okay, which is buying loans like crazy from subprime lenders, okay, and packaging them once again, sound familiar? Oh, that's a lot, a little familiar, All right? It's but it's always going to be that. When you when you allow these banks to free wheel so much and have so much power, you are going to see that they're well over leveraged, in my opinion. Okay, and they're going to bring the the this the system crumbling down once again. And you've already got South Africa now again. South Africa, who cares about South Africa? Well, it's just the point that they're easing their bank rules. Okay, you know. When one starts easing, they all start easing, and all of a sudden, the rules are no longer there, and all of a sudden, you get a person who's making $10,000 a year buying 15 houses, okay? Again, it's it's the same thing because, again, someday we'll exp explain the banking system, but at the end of the day, it's it's a bad deal, and it will always be a bad deal, which is why this needs to be stopped, which is why the Fed needs to be stopped because, again, We've got to stop the, the the disease of the drug train of free money. Okay, that's what the problem is. Okay, it's it's the drug train of the free money. Okay. In the meantime, this is Bubba's bottom line. I am Todd Bubba Horowitz. We're going to step out here for a break, and we'll be back with more after the break. Bubba's bottom line. What's up, all? Well, we got Tuesday night. We got the edging, last hedging class of the year or of the fall until fall starts. Uh, again, if you want to see that webinar, just send me an email. I'll send you. I'll send it to you. But the class starts on Tuesday, and there's about three spots left. Anybody interested? Check them out. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll go on without you. It's amazing. We will continue to go without you or with you. Okay. But the ones that go with me will be very happy as the markets continue to melt down. In the meantime, don't forget about our brokerage partners, <clears throat> uh, CTG Group for our futures uh, and letter direction trading. And they've got some great new stuff as well. They've, they put together a nice little fund, uh, which is I think is great. And of course, if that's the kind of investing you'd like to do, please email me at bub at bubbatrading.com and I will give you their information and, and, and put you in touch. And of course, don't forget about our equity partner, okay, and Tradier. And Tradier, again, you want true free commissions, not that BS of 65 cents a contract? It's Tradier. Okay. And they take care of everything. And in the meantime, I can send you a link. Just email me at bub at bubbatrading.com and I'll be happy to send that to you. And of course, don't forget about our high school program at at uh, Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. That's Patreon dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. Now let's get back to Bubba's Bottom Line with me. Welcome back. It is Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday, March the 29th. And well, what a, what a week. Woo. Man, it was, it was painful. I, I got to say, it was painful. As you know, we were short uh, most of the week, okay, and and got the old hot poker in the uh, in you know you know where, uh, and, and of course, you know, not a major surprise, 
okay, that was going to go up. I mean, we obviously, we had a rough week in our portfolios, okay, had a drawdown, which, of course, we expected, okay, it was, you know, the drawdown wasn't a surprise, right? We expected a drawdown, okay? So, again, who knows when it was to come, but we knew it was close. So, again, if you look at our equity curve, it's still going the right direction. So, again, you expect drawdowns. Really, what that does for me, a drawdown, it's just another opportunity to add. So, I'm, you know, I'm never excited about losing money, but I'm not upset, okay? In the meantime, so it was a crazy week, right? I mean, you had Monday, markets were lower and, and looked like they were going to get crushed again. And suddenly, Tuesday, out of nowhere, we have the biggest update, not the biggest, a 2,000-point update. Now, again, it wasn't even the biggest update in history. So let's remember that just because 2,000 points up doesn't mean it was the biggest ever because, again, it has to be done by percentage basis. Now, I, I, rem I remind you, that I started trading when the Dow was 800, okay? And now it's 25,000, okay? So again, remember the size of the moves are in perspective to a percentage wise. But in the meantime, 2,000 points, pretty impressive. And it followed up with, a, with a, 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 an attempt to sell it, followed by, boom, another 1,000 points or 1,300, whatever it was. And then the best was Thursday. But Thursday was so predictable, it was ridiculous. Okay, and this is when I talk about market expectations versus reality. All right, now we've talked about this many, many times. Okay, quit trading the news. If you trade the news, you lose. You've got no chance. Okay, and the market expectations—they kept saying all week, jobless claims, which, which by the way, are a worthless number in general, anyways. But anyways, jobless claims—we're going to have four million jobs that are going to be lost. Four million, four million claims for unemployment. Okay. Well, guess what? Markets were down about 600 or so coming into that announcement. And the number comes out, and what is it? 3.2. Geez, that's a horrible number. And the media couldn't get over it. Oh, it's a brutal, terrible. Blah. And what happens? The markets took off like a rocket ship. Why? Because the expectation was for 4 million. The make was 3.2. They beat the number by 20%. What else would you expect to happen from there? They had priced in four. They got three, two. Boom. The shirt's got to get out, and up the market goes. Up another 1,000. Okay. Again, it's, it's, it's not rocket science what we do here. Okay. But again, we people have to be trade the news. They got to listen to these imbeciles, these pundits that, that don't know anything, that never traded in their lives, talking about what, what the, why the market should do that. Okay. Markets work on expectations. Because the true markets, everything's already priced in ahead of time. You know, there's so much information around that most big firms who pay millions and millions and millions of dollars to have that information first, they've got a whole staff that's studying that news, putting those reports together ahead of time. So, again, I warned you, and I warned you for Tuesday, because my farmer buddies and producers, you got a number, you got a grains number coming up. Please don't trade the news. I'll give you the projection before. Okay. On Tuesday morning, I'll text out where I think the number is going to be before it comes up. Okay. In the meantime, so right now we are split. Okay. We are long the S and P. We are long the Dow. We are short the Nasdaq, and we are short uh, the Russell. Okay. Interesting di dynamic there, right? Because again, risk on would be long the Russell and 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 Nasdaq and short the Dow and Russell and and and, and S and P. So we're the opposite, which means basically, again, not by choice, by algorithm, okay? So in the meantime, we'll see what happens, okay? And, and now we look at, at gold. Now, gold had, it had a very mediocre week. I mean, it had a huge up day Monday, which forced us to buy Tuesday, which hurt me, killed me to do it. But I did it anyway. Again, I follow the rules, All right? Again, is it going to take out the top 1704? I mean, we're long, okay? I don't like the way the whole thing looks, but it did hold inside and was consolidating, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we'll see where it goes from here. We're long, okay? Again, I'm not, totally, I'm not totally thrilled with it, but we are long. And again, I will follow the algorithm as I tell you all the time, all right? Uh, you got silver and, and platinum. They're both long as well, but they look like crap, okay? Uh, I, again, I, don't think they, I, don't, I didn't think they look good to start with, and they don't look good now. And I think they're going lower for now. Now, people always ask me, well, what do I do? Do I buy gold, silver? Look, if you're buying it for an investment and you're putting it in your drawer, you're putting it in a safe, or you're storing it with somebody, what difference does it make when you buy it? Are you going to save $10 or $100? What difference does it make? Buy it, put it away, and forget about it. 
Okay, if you're gonna if you're buying it from an investor, you're not gonna trade it. If you're trading it, then it matters. If you're not trading it, it doesn't matter. It's just like equities. Okay, buy what you want when you want it, put it away. As long as you're not gonna be active, don't worry about it. Okay. Anyways, so we've got oil, crude. Now, crude is ugly. Now we've been short crude for obviously a long way, right? In the 50s. Now, again, I think it looks pretty bad, but here, again, here's where I'm, it's always the interesting conundrum I have to deal with in my own mental side of my trading. If I was just not trading the algorithms, I'd be looking for a spot to buy crude right now, okay? Because again, to me, at 20 bucks or 21 bucks, wherever it's at, you know, right? How much lower is it gonna go? Versus, okay, how much room it does have the upside if something happens. So, I, you know, from my, that status, I, so again, but we are shorted and I'm obviously thrilled to be shorted because you know I hate crude in general, but I don't hate it so much at 20 bucks, right? So what I'm saying to you is that I'm not, you know, again, we're short, but I, I, it'd be hard for me to sell here with new money, okay? And start over with a short position at $21 or 22 bucks, okay? So we'll see. But again, farmers and producers, please hedge for next year. Hedge your costs. You've got, this is your opportunity. How much more are you going to save from here? This is a big boom for you guys. Make sure you get it done. Okay. Bonds. I've never, again, I, I tell you this every week. It's, it's like a Ripley's believe it or not. Every week I see these bonds go bananas. Okay. Every week they move up and down like a yo-yo. And in the meantime, uh, what can I tell you? Uh, I mean, we're long bonds. Okay. And, and which means that interest rates are going lower. And again, I don't know. I mean, look, I, 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 I'm not a big fan of usually being long bonds, but I've also learned my lesson of fighting against the Federal Reserve, which says that interest rates are going lower. So now bonds and notes look like they want to go higher. Okay. The grain markets, you know, again, we are long corn, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. We're short corn, long beans, long wheat. Okay. Now, again, this is the corn story is very similar to the to the crude story. I'm shorted. I hate it, but I'm shorted because again, I'm going to follow the rules. But I know that it, soon it will turn, and soon it will go. It will rocket ship up to a certain point. Again, there's a big rally coming. You know, all this compression and pressure being put on the grain markets in general. I mean, if you saw wheat last week up 80 cents, okay, 16 percent. Okay, soybeans had a nice okay move. So my point is, is that at some point they become too cheap. You know, these are not companies that have earnings. People are going to eat. Okay, so again, but I will say, you know, obviously I always stay the course. I'm not looking to 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 bend the rules. I'm just saying I'm giving you an opinion as well as what we are actually stand. Okay, in the meats, uh, we're going to reverse hogs on Monday, which I, I don't like it, but I'm going to do it. Okay, because why? Because again, I follow. You know, when you're trading rule-based and mechanically, there is no room for this part, okay? You got to keep your mind out of it, okay? You know, you got to get Strother Martin in there to talk to a cool hand Luke and say, get your, keep your mind right, man. And, and that you got to keep your mind right. You can't, you cannot let outside factors screw with you because you will make the wrong decision. That is, that is, that, that is the whole purpose between, between, behind rule-based mechanical trading because there is no decision to make, okay? So you follow the rules exactly, and you don't make a bad decision. Now, the dollar got slammed a little bit last week. Now, again, look at, think about it from this point of view. The dollar is down to about 98 cents, okay? We said it was going to get the par. It was well over par. got the dollar three, okay? But you've got the Fed pounding on it and pounding on it and trying to reduce the value of it, and yet, okay? And yet, it really hasn't gone down very far. Now, again, it, you know, the dollar is a currency. We are the reserve currency, and it is a safety currency as well. So, again, we're short it right now, and, and I don't mind it. And, and certainly, it could go lower. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if buyers do come in here at some point because, you know, the world is, is burning down right now. You know, they say Rome is burning. This is, we're, we're right now, be, between this coronavirus, between a bad economy to begin with, okay, and the coronavirus, this is going to be a human tragedy, okay? I mean, again, forget about all I talked about politics all the other stuff. Right now, the real scary stuff for anybody, again, especially, you know, those that don't make as much or don't have any saved, this is going to be a real tragedy. I mean, it's, you know, again, 
you're not working, you've got kids and you need them to, you need to work. I mean, this is a tragedy. So again, it, it, growth is not going to be picking up anytime soon. And, and, and the way it looks like right now, we're not going to be out of this so fast. We may get people back to work in the next couple of weeks and get the economy restarted, but we're not going from zero to a hundred miles an hour in one week. Okay. It's going to take a long time. I, I would venture to say, okay, that, it's going to be a long time before, I mean, baseball may start in June, okay? But it'll be a long time before those stadiums will have fans in them, okay? It'll be a long time before the basketball arenas have fans in them. And, and I think football could be in real danger as well. So, again, I think that that's what you have to remember, that this is just because we shut down and we're going to reopen at some point, it's not going to, until there's a cure, or a virus, or a uh, injection. What's the word I'm looking for? I can't, can't, I, nobody can help me. I'm by myself. I'm live. Um, in the meantime, until there's a whatever it is, a shot. Okay, we can't. It's going to keep things very quiet. So the so big arenas, big restaurants, big crowded places aren't going to be big and crowded. Very bad for the economy. So again, I'm not. I'm not. Listen, I'm not threatening gloom and doom. I say to you the same thing I always say. Ten years from now. The markets will probably be up an average of eight to eight and a half percent year over year, virus or no virus, no matter what Jim Cramer says, okay? Because you know you don't have to think about him. But in the meantime, this is Bubba's bottom line. Todd Bubba Horvath going to step out here for a break, and we'll be right back with my commentary. So, kids, boy, it's sort of been nice to be hedged this last <laughs> few months, man. I tell you, it has been great and been building and buying stock down at lows and watching those big rallies come in. You know, we've got our last class until fall. Tuesday, March 31st. You know, if you want to see the webinar, if you want to join up, <clears throat> hey, Bubba at BubbaTrain.com. It's up to you. Again, I already know how to do it. I don't, it doesn't matter to me whether you come or not. But if you if you want to save your ass, come and see me. In the meantime, uh, don't forget about our brokerage partners, Trader for equities, truly free commissions, 10 bucks flat a month. Okay, what's wrong? How can you beat that? 10 bucks, no 65 cents, no nothing. Okay, that's trade here. All you do is send me an email, Bob at Bubba Trading. I'll send you their link. And of course, for futures and letter direction trading for our, our model portfolios, that's CTG Group. Okay, they do a great job, great customer service on top of it. You have questions, you don't get a voicemail, you get the persons. In the meantime, don't forget about our high school program as well at Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading. Let's get back to Bubba's bottom line and my commentary. Welcome back. It is Bubba's bottom line. It is Todd Bubba Horowitz. And of course, with all the devastation in the world, okay, with all the problems that are going on, and there are, there's plenty, okay, a lot of problems. What do you, what do you got now? You got the fear mongers coming out. The ones that are trying to, the ones that are trying to fleece you out of your last few pennies, okay. Okay, remember, the business is, 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 is tough and, and you've got, don't let fear drive you. You will get email upon email of how you're going to profit and how the next person is going to make you a billionaire from this fear that's going on. They're going to create fear in your own mind. They're going to tell you how the, the, the market is going to collapse and the world is going to collapse as we know it. And you'll get email after email really looking just to get to dip into your pocket and get some money. Okay. And I'm saying to you, okay, don't do that. Okay. Don't let fear drive you. Okay. Don't let these fear mongers that tell you that the world is coming to an end. If the world's coming to an end, what do I need to do anything for? Okay. But again, the world's coming to an end. The markets are going to collapse forever. I mean, have you not been listening to some of these guys on, on through their emails and on air for 10 years telling you the world was coming to an end? I mean, eventually the world may come to an end, but it ain't today. Okay. So again, the fear mongers are out in force right now. Because why? Because they're taking advantage of the uncertainty and the fear that Americans are feeling today. Okay. Don't give in to your fears and do something. Take a deep breath. Think about it. Look at it. Okay. Before you sign up for any ridiculous program that promises to save you from all this and give you all this money, please take a time to read it and take a deep breath and don't sign up right away. Don't let some high pressured salesman get you on the phone and bang your brains in. Sit back, relax, take a deep breath, okay? 
before you do anything. Okay? If you do all that and you still make a bad decision, hey, I can't stop you. But I'm warning you, this is the time that people will, will, will succumb to the pressure because they're afraid. Okay, and when people are afraid, they'll do a lot of things. But when they when when they smell maybe when when the carrot is put in front of them of shiny keys or free money, okay, for doing nothing, they'll give anything, and that is not the right way because nobody can offer that. It's a bunch of bull. This is Bubba's bottom line. Todd Bubba Horowitz. As always, I thank you for being here. I wish I had predictions to give. There's no sports. There's no basketball. No football. No nothing. I'm going crazy in here, locked up. In the meantime. We'll see you all tomorrow with Bubba's Eddie Update and have a great Sunday. Again, it's hard to have a great Sunday when you're locked in. Okay. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Be healthy. We'll see you back here tomorrow with Bubba's Eddie Update. And of course, every Sunday with Bubba's Bottom Line. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later.